So does your spouse feel like they are the most important person in your world? Do you know how to make them feel like they're your number one? Hi, my name is C. Savan, and this is my beautiful wife, Phyllis. Hi. And uh, we just wanted to welcome you to our channel. We are um, been married for 12 years now, and we have um, several businesses. We're entrepreneurs for 15 years, so we were business partners before we got married. We have four beautiful children, and we're from Dallas, Texas. And every marriage has its own challenges, and so did ours. Our, our marriage actually almost ended in a divorce, but we were able to turn our marriage around from failure to success. And now we are ready to share with the world. So we created this channel. So we just wanted to welcome you to the Savan Family Channel. And um, our channel is really designed, created to help married business couples with children save their marriage without therapy or counseling. So please subscribe to our channel as we're looking to grow the community. Please like our videos as well and comment. And then that little bell icon, please select that. This way when we upload new videos, you're going to be alerted every single time. We upload a brand new video. And if our videos are beneficial to you, added value to you, if you feel that they're going to benefit uh, somebody you love or a friend, please share our videos as well. And stay to the very, very end because we always share with you one ninja tip that you do not want to miss out. And we are currently in our series, How to Achieve a Happy Marriage. And this is episode number three, which is titled, Make Your Partner a Number One Priority. And um, I'm going to use us as an example here. I, um, uh, you know, one thing I've learned through our 12 years of being married that, uh, yeah, important and vital are two very different things. I used to think that they were one. And I'm going to use this as a good example. On my birthday, it's very important that my wife gives me a present. But on her birthday, it is vital that I give her <laughs> a present. And, uh, you know, one thing I've learned, uh, the difference between, uh, between those two is this. Using that as an il illustration proves that um, uh, your partner needs to be the most vital part of your life, right? And, uh, you know, being married, business couples, uh, with children, uh, with living parents, growing several different companies, I mean, we have employees, we have payroll, we have clients, we have partners, we have, uh, you know, the actual products and services that we uh, uh, manage every single day. A lot of stuff can actually come at you every single day. And uh, sometimes those type of things can get you sidetracked. But if you make your partner a number one priority in your life, it doesn't really matter what comes at you. So, you know, using... Uh, you know, I never used to do this, but now now I do. A lot of times I'll just check in on her, right? So uh, even though I'm busy, let's say I'll use an example, I'm ready to go into a meeting or something, uh, and I'll just text her, hey, I just, I'm just i going to go into a quick meeting, uh, but I wanted to check on you to see if you need anything from me. just wanted to see if there's, um, uh, and also wanted to express that, you know, I love you and I miss you. So by doing that type of stuff, she, one, she knows that I'm going into a, a big and very important meeting, but... I still uh, took the time to actually send her a message like that, give her a call. Even sometimes it's just a simple text message or WhatsApp, uh, you know, giving her a call and saying that, hey, I love you. I know I'm, I'm going to be busy for the next three hours, but so I wanted to check in on you first and see how you're doing. Do you need anything from me? And, and I love you. And I'll talk to you in about three, three hours. So that's basically it. That's how you make your wife, uh, your spouse, uh, a number one priority of yours. Yes, and uh, for me, you know, um, making him a priority wasn't hard at the very beginning, especially it's only us two, because, you know, generally as a woman, you always love to give, you always love to love. So, you know, being a priority wasn't hard. Uh, however, when we start having children, um, that was become harder, because uh, now I have to make sure that, you know, starting from, you know, breastfeeding, diapers, you know, cleaning them, loving them. And we just have a natural connection with the kids. It's like, regardless of what the kids do, you know, even, you know, if their poop smells, you just feel like, man, they smell so good. You know, it smells like flowers, right? You just have that natural, you know, God give you that natural sense that regardless of what your kids do, you always love them unconditionally. And one day I, re I do realize that I wasn't fair to my husband right here because um, I judge him. 
you know, um, it wasn't unconditional. And obviously, he's pooped that smell. Not like my children's. <laughs> and uh, I also noticed that, um, you know, when I kiss my kids, I would just give him, like, uh, you know, um, machine guns or kisses. I just, you know, pack it, pack it, pack it, pack it. But when I give it to my husband, I would just like, we're done. <laughs> Um, and uh, until today, I am still working on it very hard, and I was always making sure that now I have a checkpoint. Every time I do something with my children, I make sure I do that with my husband. And then to a point where now, you know, I should be doing it with my husband first before I do it with my children. But uh, that I know that that was the number one challenges for most women out there. It's not that we don't love the husband, especially because me and him, we are also in business, right? So whenever I work in business, I feel like I'm loving him by working hard in the business. So I don't feel like I need to express him love after work because I feel like, man, I have already given you eight hours of my attention, my time, my kids was on the sideline. So after work, I just wanted to, you know, um, um, love them and, and spoil them. And then, however, I also noticed that, you know, he will feel left out because, you know, he doesn't really understand that during work time, I'm expressing the love. And thus, after work, you know, I'm not expressing as much. But then I realized that, well, if he is number one, you know, he's going to be number one, whether it's at work or after work, right? Because at work, you kind of have business partner, so he's still your number one. After work, he's still, he should still be your number one. And then now you're going to create a love cycle because the, you're giving him so much love and you're making him feel like he's number one. He's the man, right? He's the man of the relationship. He's the king of the jungle, maybe the king of the family. <laughs> and uh, because of that... Um, He's going to also give your, your kids a lot more love, right? And that's the reason why he started to bring the kids to the park and giving them love by himself. And I feel like, wow, you know, this is very beneficial. The more that I make him number one, the more that he make me number one. And now we're fighting with each other and see who give each other number one. And uh, now we have we created a love cycle. So now it's not stressful anymore uh, because, you know, we are trying to give each other love. Right. So the question for you is, have you noticed, um, you know, this is a challenge for you. Um, have you noticed how do you express your love to your loved one? How do you make them feel like number one? OK. And I just wanted to add one more point. Um, my son uh, one day playing at the swimming pool and uh, my mother-in-law went out there. My mother and father-in-law live with us and say, hey, you need to come inside, really mad. And uh, my kid just got really mad. He's like, e mad, you know, that's grandma. Grandma, you know, um, why are you mad? We're just having a lot of fun. Why are you always mad at us? And, uh, you know, that reminded us because I told him, well, actually, the way grandma expressed love is through anger. <laughs> um, he's just very conscious and very, you know, uh, nervous about you guys being hurt or overly tired or get sunburned. So the, the anxiety come across as like anger, even though he, he, he does, she doesn't really meant to. Um, but I tell my kids, you know, that, um, you know, every time you notice that, you know, your grandma is expressing in that way, it's just the way she expressed love. And uh, I don't know whether, you know, you guys out there express love to that way, because I used to. I used to express the more love that I have for him, the more the more that I criticize on him without knowing it myself. However, now I obviously have changed it and I would also wanted to remind you that, you know, are you doing that too? And if it is and you can't change about it, make sure that you talk to your spouse about it. Hey, the, re the way I make you feel number one is I'm gonna crit criticize and crucify you. But uh, hopefully you don't, hopefully you don't. But I do want to bring up that, that topic because um, my, my mother-in-law definitely made my kids number one. But the way she expresses it, it's a little bit different. It's just very traditional, very traditional grandparents. So if you really are doing that, you know, make sure that you communicate it well. And uh, and again, is that the way uh, they would like to be loved, right? The, on, the ep the, on the second episode, we kind of talk about that. You know, give your, your, your spouse, your partner, uh, love that they want to be loved. If they love you, crucify them or be critical with them, then go for it. But it is not, you know, make sure that you check yourself and make sure that you know, you know, what are the things, steps, tools, and resources that you can use to make them feel number one. 
Yeah, and I used to think that, you know, she needed me less when she would give uh, attention to the boys, for example. Right? It's really not the case. It's really all within in your head at that point because uh, as she's giving more attention to the boys because she didn't have enough of them that day because she was giving so much to me. So, uh, you know, I changed my story, right? So my, my primary outlook was, oh, there she goes again, you know, um, you know, taking, uh, uh, giving my boys, making my boys much more priority than me, but really it wasn't the case. She was giving me so much that when she gets home, she really needed time with the boys. And really, I didn't really think that I needed time with my boys too. So then I started taking time uh, with them, you know, giving, making them a priority priority in my life, which then I realized, man, I'm actually giving my wife, it, I am making my wife a priority, number one priority. So uh, I need priority with my, my kids as well. So that's what I realized. I kind of lived in her world a little bit and understood what she was going through um, by giving me so much throughout the day that she just needed more time with my sons. So that's pretty much it. So thank you for staying at the very, very end, as we promised, the ninja tip. The ninja tip is allow your loved one to be themselves. Let go of your expectation of them. Because if they are truly number one, nothing else matters. So listen to that. Allow them to be themselves. That also means that allow yourself to be yourself and uh, let go of the expectation so you guys will truly get your happiness. Awesome. Yeah, so we, we look forward to uh, you know episode number four. And again, we our channel is created to save marriages and help marriages grow. So please subscribe to our channel and uh, like our videos, comment, and then hit that little bell icon. This way when we upload new videos you'll be alerted and share our videos that it's going to benefit a loved one or, or a family member. And if you are need, needing help uh, immediately, um, we created a one hour training for you, a free training. As a matter of fact, it's an online training. Click on the link below. When you click on the link below, you'll register for the training, which will, uh, I, we really highly recommend that you take go to that training and that you actually watch it together. So there's going to be, it's called the seven steps of the ultimate marriage. These are seven steps that we apply that have really helped us, turn our, uh, you know, failing marriage into a success has really turned our marriage around and not only has it turned around, really grown. I mean, our love and passion for each other is a lot stronger than even at the very beginning. So, you know, after 12 years. So if you want to achieve that, these seven steps would definitely help you with that. So click on the link below. Again, we look forward to seeing you in episode number four. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye.